Let me share a little bit about my background before we get started. I am the broker owner of Boston Connection. Are you in Maine? A boutique firm that is no, I'm in that. 30 real estate sales and marketing agents. That's what I am. Um, that other date I gave you, Boston, so we could talk about South credit Shore, scores and everything. Coast, so and now that we can do this so clearly, so it doesn't matter if you're up in Maine or anything, because that's what when we were putting the calendar together yesterday for first quarter, and Mel's like, well. We I don't know if Jasmine will be in Maine or not. And I was like, well, she can do it anywhere. So every week, my co-host, Melissa Wallace, but if you're out snow, you snow what do you do? Snowmobiling? Uh, Sharon, before I throw it to you, uh, David missed you one thing on the traffic. Can you, you just okay. hold yeah. on a sec? We yeah, that's fine. Yeah, let my intro go. And then can I just can so introduce that? that not only of course you can. Yeah. Okay. I'll introduce David. Who is it, David? Occasionally, you will hear the expert yeah. thoughts and opinions of our experienced yeah. agents at Boston Connect Real Estate. Be a part of our roundtable. Uh, if you have any mm -hmm. questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you All right, like David got the message. <laughs> What's, should I just say David from like the one -on -one traffic studio? With the newsroom, yeah. To discuss your newsroom, real okay. estate needs. It's David Cedroni in the WATD newsroom. Boston yes. <laughs> or 781-826-8000. Now, sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And good morning to all my South Shore neighbors. Uh, you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. I am Sharon McNamara. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate. We are live today in our home studio at our office at Boston Connect Real Estate, the sponsor of our show. I'm also in studio this morning Steve. with we are live with um, Myth, uh, Melissa Wallace, <laughs> who is the director of um, everything here at Boston Connect. But more importantly, we have David in the newsroom over at WATD, and he has a very, very important traffic uh, report to give you that we just want to make sure you have that this morning before we start our show. David? All right. Yeah, thanks, Sharon. On Route 3 southbound, a new crash just came in. Sharon, just wanted to get this in here real quick. 3 southbound, it's in the guardrail right before Route 18 in Weymouth. Just uh, stay, uh, uh, stay careful getting by there. Thanks, Sharon. Oh, you're welcome, David. And it's Melissa. <laughs> um, again, you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My name is Melissa Wallace. I'm joined live in in studio with the one and only Sharon McNamara, broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate. And we have Tim in the studio. Hi, Tim. Yes, hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm, I'm good. Oh, wow. It's, I'm just looking out the window here. It's, it's pretty wet and wild. If you are on the roads, two hands on the wheel and don't speed. This yeah. is not... Woo. Yeah, hopefully everybody got WATD on their radio before they started uh, driving, so yes, it's nice please. and safe. But yeah. um, yes. and apps, and you know the other thing too, Tim. I was on my way here this morning, yeah. and I went went through one of those big puddles. So if you are out there, oh, I, mean, I did. Yeah, yeah and that'll pull the wheel. So yeah, um, put the phone down. Yeah, drop the phone. Yeah, it, 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 your life is not worth your phone making you crash no absolutely oh. yeah and if you're on the highway if you're on route three or any of the other local highways here in uh, our area south of boston and south coast just use the middle lane right because then things don't tend to yep. puddle on each yeah. side but absolutely. sometimes you hit those puddles and whew. oh i know yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it sends a chill down your spine yeah it does <laughs> it doesn't make you nervous rob gilman likes to say if you see a big puddle you're driving to you're not sure how deep it is Turn around, don't drown. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good one. Mark yes, had to do is. that this week in Cohasset. Mark was going to the Bellamine House yeah. in Cohasset, uh, which is owned by, you know, the Catholic Church here uh, in in Boston. And he does all the winterizing and things mm -hmm. for, their, the, for their big place in Cohasset. And he sent me a picture. He's like, it looks like I'm not getting to the Bellamine House today. Like Cohasset Harbor was just flooded. So yeah. he couldn't get through. Yeah. But uh, good morning to you. Good morning to you. Thank you. Yeah, a little sleepy this morning but do you yeah. want to uh let everybody know about our awesome topic today and uh what we're gonna we're gonna be on, tra on task today we're gonna be on we're task gonna try i mean we're let's be try. honest yeah i mean we are pretty sleepy today but um we're gonna be joined by a couple people um sort of what, from around the country really um sharon's talked about clubhouse on the show uh quite a few times so if you don't have the app um she'll give you a little introduction on what it is but it sort of connects everybody um with you know topics and stuff it's like a it's like a message board but where you're talking to them um so we have a couple agents from um, agents and loan officers i think jasmine's on there as well uh, that are going to be talking about this topic as well so um we're talking about home inspections today um and pre-home inspections i know we did a show about pre-home inspections with a couple of these yeah. uh women before <laughs> um but we want to give a little refresher and um we're in a new year so um you know with 
interest rates being where they're at, um, you know, more buyers coming into the market, the, you know, the inventory sort of being the same, Mm -hmm. I feel like, at least Mm -hmm. in this area, and we'll hear um, the other agents' perspectives as well. Um, But we're just going to be talking about home inspections. Are you doing them? Are you waiving them? Um, What's a pre-home inspection? Mm -hmm. Are you doing them? (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's the big debate, and that's why I had to invite some of the people that I did invite (laughs) on the show today. And Jasmine, it will be good to have Jasmine on there. I don't know how long she can stay with us. And I think Anna can only stay with us for a limited amount of time today. But um, and Megan, of course, is with us. And if the ladies in the in the room, if you want to share the room, uh, feel free to do that. I know that there are other rooms going on and I certainly don't want to take away from them. But uh, we are this is such a hot topic when we when we do discuss this on Clubhouse. And it is, you know, very informative for our listeners as well. Uh, But you know, what would be interesting, and I'm wondering if Jasmine, if she gets any, you know, feedback from her clients who have purchased maybe last year or the year before and they took that option to waive their home inspection contingency and if they're here if she's hearing anything about that so that's um i think a good piece that maybe we can bring jasmine into as well because we all know that jasmine is from maritime mortgage and she's our girl um here so um i do know that anna has to take off because uh she has an appointment um she's so good about keeping her appointment at the gym um but she um is the person that talks it's it's Anna and uh, Michelle Meinhardt uh, but I, M- Michelle is looking at colleges with her daughter and Megan I'm not sure if Megan does do pre-home inspections as well Megan do you good morning Sharon good morning. we do it is not as prevalent here on Long Island but it's starting to catch on Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. So, well, you're good. if you're going to stay on with us, we can talk a little bit more. I know Anna uh, does have to get going. She only has about 15 minutes left. So, uh, Anna, do you want to take a moment to introduce yourself to our listeners here uh, uh, in the, at WATD and all our listenership that we are on live on Facebook as well? So I put the link at the top of Clubhouse, too, if you guys want to see what the studio looks like. But, Anna, could you introduce yourself to everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I'm Anna Abadamarco. I'm a realtor here in Chester County, Pennsylvania. This is my 11th year in real estate and my eighth year in recommending and encouraging my clients, my home sellers, to consider doing pre-home inspections. And I will tell you that as the years go on, uh, more and more of my clients do choose so in the last two to three years, I would say 98% of all the listings that I've taken, the sellers have chosen to do so. I cannot remember the last time a buyer has uh, come in to do their own inspections after the fact. So I would say almost 100% of the time, buyers do waive the inspection contingency period on, on our deals. That's so interesting. So, I mean, this is, I'm just going to get um, Melissa up to speed here too. And our listeners is that, so around here, we tend not to do this as much. And I do know that I do have a client that listens to the show and it was probably this time last year because Anna was on, we, we were going through the whole calendar yesterday and it was probably around, it was in January. And one of our clients did do a pre-home inspection and, you know, a couple things came up and they got those items fixed. But for the most part, we don't hear a lot about people mm. doing that around here. And I don't know if it's because, you know, Massachusetts is that caveat emptor state where it's like buyer beware. Is it one of those things where sellers are afraid to do a home inspection, a pre-home inspection, because they don't have the means to get things fixed? That's one of the, you know, one of the reasons I said to Anna, well, maybe that's why we don't do it. I don't know. Um, but she had some really good um uh, what's the word that I want? I want to say pushback because it wasn't pushback. It was just like sort of like the perspective, like, no, this is this is why it's better for the seller to do a pre-home inspection. And then the other thing I thought was, is it because we have so many older homes around here? And of course, things are going to come yeah. up. And then like, what do we have to disclose? And of course, we have to disclose anything we know. And it's honestly, the reason to not do it is not because of that, because we don't want to disclose it. Mm -hmm. I guess it's just something we don't do. And maybe we'll be the first to start doing it. And I know Anna's trying to turn me around to be the first of the first to do it around (laughs) here. (laughs) So, Well, I was the first of the first in in my area. So why not? You know, and and so just to clarify, because that's another myth about pre inspections, 
seldom, if ever, my sellers actually do make any repairs. I'll give you an example. Uh, recently, and, and this has happened, oh my gosh, dozens of times on my listings. One of the things that's an issue around here is moisture remediation on faulty stucco properties. So the exterior of the home is um, stucco mm. facade. And something like that on a 3,000 plus square foot home could cost you a minimum of like 70, 80,000 to about 150. Wow. I've gone as far as $200,000 on these types of homes. And so rather than remediate, once we establish that there is indeed a moisture issue, we call it a stucco problem, but in reality, it's a moisture problem. And so when that uh, needs to happen, rather than have my clients remediate, we will price accordingly, disclose the situation, cannot tell you how many times we received multiple offers. And if you estimated what it would have cost my seller to correct it, correct the issue, the time, the money, then go on market and then get offers, they always net considerably more pre-inspecting, disclosing, not correcting, accepting an offer, moving on with life. Everyone's thrilled. And, and I, Honestly, I couldn't imagine doing this process any other way. And it's interesting to me, though, because I, I can see in this market with low inventory how that concept works well. So, and again, I'm just going to sort of slow it down a pace for myself. So I'm fully understanding until our, our listeners who, if you know, if anybody's thinking about, you know, selling their home. So it, the way that Anna would do it is she would have you do the pre-home inspection and then things would come up. And here's my question to you, Anna, is the price, are you pricing the home according to the condition of the home and those items? So are you saying, okay, if we didn't know about this stucco issue, then it would have been, you know, it's going to be $50,000 less that you're putting the house on the market for? Are you still putting it on for where you would have initially? No, we're absolutely adjusting the price knowing that this particular thing is, you know, why we're priced where we're at. And so as buyers come in, you know, and, and don't eat, don't get me started on the amount of showings that listen, we get. Listen, you here's know. the thing. I'm live on the air. The last thing I plan on doing is getting Anna going. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have a mute button, okay? That, we could stop some things in there. Yeah, Megan it's gets it. I see mute Megan. <laughs> mute me anytime. Mute me anytime. No, I would but never. Think about it. Think about having a, a home that is valued without an issue at 800000 and then finding out that you have an issue that's going to cost fifty to seventy-five thousand, and so instead you list the home at seven fifty or seven twelve, you know, whatever it may be, somewhere in the sevens. Well, you get every buyer out there coming to see the home. You've got lines of people wanting to see the property, and now you're able to weed out the ones that don't have the stomach for doing it, that recognize the value in doing it the way that they want to do it, whatever that it may be. You increase the value of the home by having more offers to negotiate against. You don't pick up a finger to do a darn thing other than what you've already done, which is disclose the heck out of this situation. Um, and, and you leave it to the buyers. And yes, because it's a seller's market and such low inventory, uh, you know, you have a increased chance of accomplishing it this way. And, and that has definitely helped uh, this process is because there's such limited properties for a home buyer to buy. But if you have the house in the right neighborhood and that, you know, everything else is great, but this issue, they will take it buyers are way more forgiving, but not disclosing it and having them buy it at the higher number and only for them to find out later that they have this tremendous issue. Well, now you're opening yourself up to lawsuits. So am I your realtor from selling to closing or am I your realtor from, you know, transaction and beyond? So I... Oh, you're breaking up a little bit. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Yep. Okay. Can you hear me better now? I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. It's just not doing best by your seller just during the transaction, but beyond the table, right? Protect their best. Yeah. And that's the thing I think around here, though, I just wonder, and I, I would worry a little bit is that, 
you know, I say that all the time to people. It's like, hey, we've priced the house according to the condition it's in. So like, I know that the roof is this old. I know that the windows are this old or whatever. And the house is priced according to that condition. And then it's inevitable that people will then still, after home inspection, try to renegotiate and say, oh, well, the windows are older, so I need to do this. Or the roof is older, so I need to do this. And it sort of like gets in the way of hey, I've already told you that the house is priced according to the condition it's in. So I'm curious, with that home inspection that you do, and you might have said it, but you were breaking up, so I don't know if you're in your car and just going through a bad area, is do you give that home inspection to potential buyers if they're working with another agent? Yes, 100%. We are not accepting an offer until they've signed. So the, the report, if you look at your seller's disclosure, and of course it's different in your state, but the report on the last page will ask the homeowner if they have any knowledge of any third party reports and they uh, say yes of course we've done a pre-inspection please see attached and so that information becomes part of the seller's disclosure that the buyer needs to sign off on that they have reviewed it and you know have knowledge of it just like the seller's disclosure so no there is never not only is there never a time of renegotiating the buyers are generally waiving the inspection contingency period altogether. There is no discussion. The price that we agree to at time of contract is the closing price of the home. Hmm. You have questions? I, I don't. I mean, oh. I, I know that it makes sense when you're when you're telling me, but it's still like the concept around here. It's just like I feel like I'm in the same position as you, Sharon. Like, yeah. can we get people to start doing these things? Because honestly, like, you know, especially in the past maybe year, two years, like a lot of buyers were waiving their home inspection. So it really didn't matter. So like in the for the perspective of the seller, it's like, why would why would I want to pay for it um, if I feel like, you know, the buyer is going to waive the okay. home inspection? I'm anyways. so sorry. I'm going to interrupt because I have literally two minutes. And here's what I'll say about that. Think of the other side. How many lawsuits, how many requests for mediation arbitration have you received after the fact? And you can check with your state and, and your local board to determine how many actual, because here in Pennsylvania a year or so ago, there was a 42% increase in mediation requests after settlement. Now, not the, the entire amount was because of inspection or material defects being disclosed, but a large portion of them were. So consider that, guys. And I know there's a lot to talk about. I can go on for hours about it, but unfortunately, I'm going to jump. And Sharon, always appreciate your space. And thank you for, for the time to, to right. chat about I also it. I need to find out, how close are you to Pittsburgh? <laughs> other side of the map, uh, other side of the state. Yeah. Oh, okay. So maybe you know someone in that area so we can chat. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Have uh, a great one. Take all right. Care. You too. Have a good workout. Um, so that was Anna. I can't say her last name, so whatever. I'm just going <laughs> to fake it. But she's she is uh, she does a great job. And she, you know, when we're in uh, Clubhouse, she always has such great perspective on everything, too. So, um, Megan, if you are there, too, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, because Megan is from Long Island. First of all, if you could just take a moment to reintroduce yourself to our listeners here in WATD. So if people are thinking about uh, buying maybe a summer home in your area. Good morning and hello to everyone in WATD land. This is Megan Gardner. I'm here on Long Island, New York. I'm actually on Long Island South Shore, just like you're on the South Shore of Boston. Mm -hmm. um, here on Long Island, we are starting to see more and more homeowners or sellers do the pre-listing home inspection. Personally, for my clients, I think it's a great idea. At the end of the day, it gives the seller more control there's an issue with your home, the condition or the health of the home, it's going to come up at some point. So you can either recognize it, address it and disclose it. And like Anna said, either fix it or, or disclose it and work that into the price, or it's gonna come up later and possibly cause issues. The buyers will see, oh, we found this. You didn't know, let's go back after them for some money. And you're now in a position where you have to bargain with them versus where you're coming out front with disclosure, you're calling the shots. Does that make sense? It does. But then I also think about this is what about 
you know, we've gone through like this time period. And again, I have a very strong listing agent mentality. That's what makes my team so great is because Mary can always like hit me from the other side from a buyer perspective, but then I hit her back with the, the listing side, right? The seller side. And, you know, one of the things that I can already see what, you know, the the setback or what the I, I cannot think this morning at all but what the not the controversy what is that the objection that the sellers would have would be but so many people are waiving their home inspections right now why would I go ahead and open up a can of worms if I don't have to now again this I want to preface too that I'm not saying that if if a seller knows about something that is a defect in the home, they are required to tell me. If I know anything that's a defect in the home, by law, I am required to disclose it. So I'm not even saying about trying to hide those things, but then what about the things you don't know about and little things that do come up? And you know what I mean? I just feel like if people are waiving their home inspection, then maybe that's on them. What are people's thoughts on stage here on that? Okay, so a couple of points. One is, would it not then, following that argument, would it not then even bolster the value of the home even more? Buyers who are clamoring to get in and lock your house down, see that you've done the home inspection, they've already got the information out front, they want to lock it down, and potentially you're going to create even more interest. What do you think, Mel? creating more interest yeah because it's yeah. already had <clears throat> and again i can see that hey we've already had a home inspection done on this property we are fully aware of any defects that it may have i mean that is actually a really really good point but i'm just curious about the whole price part of it. well i was just gonna say i feel like pricing it to the condition that it's in after when you already know these things is even more critical yeah. than I mean obviously we always want to price a house to, according to the condition that it's in but ultimately it's the seller's decision to you know what what price we're putting it on the market for but I think once if you go through the pre-home inspection and you figure out all these things then yes like you have to factor those in because now it's being brought to the buyer's attention yeah and then one of the other things I was thinking about, too, is the seller disclosure. And this is such a, a, con a great conversation to have as well. And I'm sort of glad Anna isn't in the room anymore. And hopefully she's not listening to replays. No, I'm kidding. <clears throat> Anna is great because we definitely can bounce things off of each other and we can, like, handle each other. You know what I mean? I know it's taken from a point of you know, hey, we want to learn from each other, as is everybody in the room, but no one else in the room gives me a hard time like Anna. No, I'm kidding. Um, but I, we don't even use a seller's disclosure here in our office. <clears throat> and I know, <clears throat> I don't know why I can't talk either. Mm. So <clears throat> a lot of other, you know, other organizations and other firms do use the seller disclosure. And again, I can understand why. And the reason why I got away from it was because and I don't even know if it's different, and maybe we can look into this, Mel, is, you know, I was obligated as the agent and the broker to sign off on that. And I was like, why am I signing off on something I don't know if that is accurate? Like, I don't, you know, yes, I know my clients, for the most part, 98% of my business is referral business or people who hear me on the radio show. But I don't know if they're telling me the truth. So yeah. like, I was always fearful of signing off on that. Like if it if it was a if it was a for, if it was a seller's disclosure that it was just the seller filling it out, then I would feel a little more comfortable with it. But we also have forms and stuff that we send our clients just to say, hey, can you give us this information as well? Um, I just want to. It's eight thirty now. We're going to skip our break, but I just want all of our WATD listeners to know you're listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. I am Sharon McNamara. I am the broker owner of Boston Connect Real Estate here located in Pembroke. We're in our home studio and um, it, it is our place to call home here. So if you're ever in the area over by the shopping plaza across the street and you want to see our studio, come on in. Um, and if you want to get in touch with us at any point, you can at 781-826-8000 or at bostonconnect.com. If you want to sort of give, I would love to hear some people who are out there that are thinking about buying um, or selling a house. And what is your perspective coming from a buyer standpoint or coming from a seller standpoint? You can call the studio. Tim is there, 781-837-4900. Again, 781-837-4900. And Tim, I think that they can text you questions too, right, to that same number? Um, that's in the in the works. Oh, I okay. Don't, I don't Not have yet. that capability yet, but uh, okay. yeah. 
well, they can text me, 781-294-4848. And we did have someone text me on Tuesday night. But yeah. it looks like you have somebody <coughs> who's uh, yeah. watching us on Facebook. Tracy Grady, Hello, full-time Tracy. realtor here at Boston oh, Connect Real Estate. <laughs> yeah, there she is. I know. Tracy, I'm, I have you coming in on sat- on a Saturday in uh, February, I think. But, um, you know, obviously she's a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate with her husband, Jim. She uh, said, sellers sometimes think their house is perfect and puts a realistic picture of what the house is worth. However, seller does disclosure is again the seller's opinion of their home oh yeah see that's a good point yeah that is a good point and then she says ha 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> and tracy i just did, uh, just gave you an invite yeah see and that's what uh jasmine is saying too right oh is she leaving are you waving goodbye or are you saying hi i'm raising my hand i don't know how to do this intro. okay <laughs> you don't have to raise your hand you just pipe writing you know how jasmine hello, hello jasmine so jasmine hello. it's from hello. yeah jasmine is from maritime mortgage she uh is on our show with us a lot and she is our mortgage go-to girl she helped melissa recently she yeah. helped i think that i'm wondering i want to know if we're like the contest winner, winners of the fastest closings that she's had oh i don't know if mine's the fastest i mean i <laughs> yeah that was quick mine was 23 days yeah, yours yeah is my days. fastest closing is eight days yeah and oh. the rescue day. you guys are too organized to need me in a rescue situation <laughs> okay uh, yeah i know we need you to I, rescue us yeah. <laughs> So, I'll so, do that just for fun. Okay, good. I wanted to chime in here um, from the buyer's perspective, from what I'm seeing. And uh, I actually have an agent on the North Shore that I work with um, who does this and does not accept home inspections on their listings. Hmm. And it's the Reading area. And it's like part of her spiel. She's she's like... Um, She's an Anna of the North Shore. She's mm-hmm. she's that you can in Sarah knows. Like it's yeah. very direct. She's very organized and everything is just like this is the way it is. And I've been doing this so long and I'm, I'm a professional. Everyone respects her and understands that. But people know if they're putting an offer in on their property, if it has a home inspection, she'll go back and say, Hey, here's the pre home inspection. And they retain the home inspector to have conversations with the buyers to answer any questions. So not only does the home inspector put videos in like a really, really nice format, like their their home inspections are probably the most high tech I've seen. But he, they're also retained, and I think it's like maybe like a flat fee of like twelve hundred dollars or something. But if buyers have questions, they can reach out to the home inspector. It has a, an independence like certificate with it, and they say, you know, you you know, we see your offer. Thank you so much, but we are not doing home inspections. Here is the pre listing. Um, if and you know, this is again because we're in a seller's market, they can do that. They have all the control, but they're not accepting offers with the home inspection. And right now, especially, I have so many clients not doing home inspections, Mm -hmm. even on homes that very clearly should have home inspections. Mm -hmm. So I can see the apprehension on the seller side to go, hey, like I don't really need to do this. But think about how many people look at the the older house and they go, I know if I can't do a home inspection because there's multiple offers, I'm not even going to throw my hat in the ring Mm -hmm. because I'm uncomfortable going into this house knowing that I'm not going to have my offer accepted with a home inspection, but knowing that I need one. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, sellers often believe their homes are perfect. And, and, you know, there's that whole rainbow glasses situation, but at the end of the day, you know, there, these things will come up and it's, it often kind of comes up post closing and the sellers feel like they're completely, you know, protected, but there's that whole, you know, it depends on the state too. Like you have to disclose if you know, et cetera, but in like Maine and New Hampshire, it's a little different. Like you have that full disclosure and there is some, there is some, you know, risk in after closing Massachusetts is a little harder with the whole buyer beware state but I'm seeing more and more lawsuits mm-hmm. I've got a couple dozen clients right now with flooded basements mm-hmm. and they're like the seller you know I, we have serve pro out here and the, they said that this that this house floods every winter and the seller didn't tell us wow. is you know? that awful I mean here's the thing is like as a listing agent that's the type of stuff that frustrates me and on like I've been doing this for 21 years I've been to hundreds of hundreds of home inspections. So I'm not saying I'm a home inspector, but I do know certain things to look at. You know what I mean? When I am, you know, in a home and I'm looking and I ask people questions, like I instantly know when people have gotten permits or not haven't gotten permits. I know that's going to be a show that Tracy's going to be doing um, with Mel coming up um, in the first quarter as well. 
And I just think, why, why lie? Like, I, I, I just, you know what? And again, hey, you got the sale, you got the most amount of money, you moved on to another state, whatever it is. Is it worth rotting in hell for? <laughs> <laughs> So good because that's the thing, and I I think there's the moral side of it, of yeah. course, but also the financial side of it. Those listings for her, they go quick, they're efficient, and everything's right on the table. And I I had a client who bought one of her listings, and um and and she she won't do both sides either. It's like a thing for her. Mm-hmm. And so she sent it to someone else in her office, and they were working with the client. And they were like, no no, here it is. Like this crack in the foundation is an actual issue. And here's a quote behind it. And like, you need to be aware. And they went in fully aware and the appraisal came in higher because the appraiser is only working on sales. They're not working on, you know, the the as is state. So they, they went in feeling like they had good equity and knowing, Hey, when I make this repair, it's going to be worth the money. I love pre home inspections. I think that it does both sides a, a, a great service and it's, it streamlines this whole beginning process of that. Do I waive my home inspection? I cannot stand that we're waiving home inspections. I cannot stand that people are advising it on mm-hmm. these first time builders. Like they mm-hmm. never built a house in their, in their entire lives. Mm-hmm. Have, this is their first permit they've ever pulled. And they're, they're like, well, it's new. And I'm like, yeah, it's new to him too. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. let's, Let's think about this. And, mm-hmm, yeah. and agents are just saying, well, you want the house, don't you? And it's true. It's so hard to kind of get in. But do you, what are you getting into? Mm-hmm. And to, I mean, we're, we're, we have to talk that there are some times because I did not do a home inspection on the building I purchased, right? I think that you you have to, like, and I knew, like, the, the, I asked the seller, do you get water in the basement? And he said, no. Um, I asked the agent, and he was new, green agent. And I said, oh, can you just ask? And I was very point blank about it. I said, can you ask the seller how often he got water in the basement and how high did it, the highest it ever got? He came back to me and said, oh, we never got water in the basement. And I was like, okay. Well, I could tell you were lying. I can see watermarks down there, right? Um I just wanted to know the truth. I was still going to go forward with the house because Mark is a plumber. I, my brother-in-law is an electrician. One of, you know, somebody that I've worked with and I consider a friend is like, he was a foreman on a lot of new construction. He is the building inspector in, you know, our town, you know, so I brought people in that were experts in the field. So instead of me having the home inspector that knows a little bit about everything, I brought in the people who know the most about those things. So in a way... Like I didn't do a home inspection, but I did um, like so I didn't have a contingency where I could get out of the contract because of it. But I did have people who came through the house with me before, you know, before I did put in that offer. Um, interestingly about it is I my, one of my neighbors actually worked in this building and she's like, Sharon, we had water up to our shins one day in that basement. Yeah. So I was a little nervous and we were always on pins and needles around here. But Mark found the issue. They have a I have a sump pump. Nothing wrong with having a sump pump, by the way. It's what you want if you're in a high water table. But the sump pump, the 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 pipe, it wasn't really even a pipe then, but Mark made it a pipe. It was like a hose. Yeah. It went out um out the side of the building but then it went back into the window well and the it's a like stone foundation and then it was just trickling back yeah. into the building so it was re, it was like just pushing the water in and like just re, what is the word that i'm looking for rotating it right right back in so mark fixed it and has the water going out we haven't had a drop we've of water never had, <laughs> we've never had water in the basement and we've been here four years yeah. um i will say that uh so tracy has another comment i also try not to wave um for first-time home buyers i think it's important for them to experience the whole process and keep them realistic and not nickel and dime sellers just major issues yeah and tracy just in case if you do have time i did uh, send you the link on clubhouse so that's a good way for you to get on now and you can talk to and that's one of the items that i was going to bring up too is I think having a home inspection, other than, you know, home inspection isn't necessarily to find out what's wrong with the house. It's to learn the house. I mean, you're going to be living in the house. You don't know where, you know, the water shut off is. You don't know, you know. Oh, here's a really good example with new construction, actually. Um, Jasmine, you know uh, my niece that you were helping. They ended up renting because of buyer fatigue. And they were they're in a new construction place but they've both been very sick since they moved in in november and he lifted up the there's like a air vent and he lifted it up and it's all like sheetrock dust up there Mm -hmm. so when maintenance came they never put a filter on that 
So like a home inspector would have noticed that, that there yeah. was no filter. I mean, I'm not saying you do it on rentals, but that's just sort of a good example. So um, again, 781-837-4900. If you're out driving around this morning in this muck of, of weather we have here in New England, uh, and you have any comments about this from a buyer perspective or a seller perspective, we'd love to hear from you. 781-837-4900. We're also on Facebook, so you can see us on Facebook if you want to send us a message there. And then I have my crew here yeah. um, on Clubhouse. So ladies on Clubhouse, does anyone have anything that they would like to share? Well, I want to give... No, I want to give Jasmine an opportunity to sort of introduce herself. We oh. sort of just blew over that. Okay. And everybody sort of knows who you are. And we assumed that everybody yeah. knew. But Jasmine, just um, give your credentials to everybody in case they haven't listened to you before. Oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm Jasmine Glasgow. I'm the broker owner of Maritime Mortgage Corp. We're in the south store of Massachusetts. But we're Maine, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, a mass in Florida now. Mm. Um, and can I just share one quick yeah story yeah. um because i and i want to share too i don't get home inspection inspections on my properties but my husband's a general contractor like yeah. we're fine yeah and so it's not always so I, when i say that i i typically mean first-time home buyers mm -hmm. um or inexperienced like inexperienced older, yeah 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 you know there's just there's always a class but i do have a client earlier this year who bought new construction and beautiful house everything looked really well there were just issues during the transaction like the whole time about like the the builders um licensing and stuff and we we thought nothing of it um they immediately you know we we send them the new construction buyer book and you know get a dehumidifier in there have that working in the basement 24 7 concrete weeps and they're like it's just it's still musty it's still musty they had a mold company come out poke a hole in every wall in the house in this entire 4,000 square foot house, there was mold throughout mm. the entire house because and if the builder had done a hers rating, they would have realized that the heating system was not vented and taped properly. So moisture has been seeping out in, through the air ducts into the walls, um, behind the walls, and there was mold throughout the entire house. Um, it was just condemned by the city and Brockton, mm -hmm. and they, um, they are now sitting with a, you know, almost a million dollar mortgage mm -hmm. and they are in litigation and the builder even though there's a three-year warranty in massachusetts that you cannot waive for new construction the builder just said sue me oh my god wow. you know and here's the thing too jasmine with that is with mold and in certain areas and i know down in florida too like they have like huge issues with mold down there as well but with new construction you have to be really careful in new england because a lot of times like you know you see the wood that's just like piled outside and stuff but once mold spurs start like they're they're hard to stop i've always wondered that <laughs> like I, mm -hmm. like i've always wondered like new construction when it's like torrential downpour for like days and all mm -hmm. and then you're building the house it's like well, I, I, well, I don't know. Most, Maybe I'm just not smart. No, no, <laughs> like, you, are, you are very smart, what, by the way. I'm like, I've always wondered, like... But for the most yeah, part, it would dry out, right? Yeah. So, like, that's before they'll, like, cover it up. And then they have, like, you know, they well, the, when they do it the right way, they do have moisture barriers and things like that that they're also putting on the exterior of the house before they put vinyl or any of that on. So, um, but it's interesting, Jasmine, too, because... Um, I think there's another client of yours that I referred to and he was purchasing a family member's home and it was sort of this estate thing. And if it's ringing a bell, I just don't want to say it out loud. Um, but recently I was told that there was some mold down there too that, that, that just came up. Mm. So, and, yeah. yeah. So, ugh, be careful. Sharon, yeah. One more, one more purpose of the home inspection that I'd like to share. Pre, pre home inspection or yes. after? Pre and post. So we we have been talking about uh, buyers who are waiving their home inspection. Yeah. And the home inspection also serves as a financial tool for the homeowner's future, right? Mm -hmm. So the home inspector is going to come in and they're going to point out what needs to be addressed, if anything, immediately. And also then you'll get your plan for what might need to be addressed with a general timeline in the future. For example, this is your hot water heater. You can expect it that in potentially another five to seven years, you might be looking at buying a new one, mm -hmm. et cetera. So you're walking into your home already having a financial plan 
And that way you can make adjustments for what you might need to be doing in the future. What do you think about that? I think that that's a very valid point too. And I think that that's one of the things with Tracy, you know, um, that is also um, texting us as well is, you know, her point of that whole thing is, you know, you can't, just because you have the home inspection, it isn't about nickel and diming, you know, the seller to make all of these repairs. It's so you can financially plan for your future and you know exactly what's going to go, you know, what's going to happen. So, yeah, thank you for bringing up that point, because I I do think, too, like back back in the day when I did more like working with buyers and Mary does all of that now for our team. I mean, I'm still out there, but she you know, I would always, I always say, okay, well, th like you just said, these are the things that you can expect now. These are the things you can expect then, you know, so you can just have a full timeline of it. And Jasmine, when you're, you know, giving people, you know, helping people with their loan process, I mean, is that something that you're sort of educating them on too? It's like one thing to come up with your down payment, but also yeah. having, having the reserves, yeah. like if anything goes wrong. You can ask most of that question. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is true. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been pretty open about my whole, you know, buying journey, especially with Jasmine. And, you know, I just kept saying, and, and we, we always talk about how important it is to keep in constant contact with your loan officer because, mm -hmm. like, you know, one day you can afford this, one day, you know, you can afford this, especially with the interest rates sort of going all over the place. But, you know, I always just kept asking Jasmine, if I can't do this, just tell me. Like, if I can't afford this, just tell me. And she just was was like my you know one of my biggest cheerleaders and being like no you can do this you are there you are there but um yeah you know ha making sure you know i'm sure along the way there was the that conversation with jasmine where it was like okay this is what you need for your down payment this is what you need for you know the closing table mm -hmm. and you need a you need that cushion because it, like any other it could be new it could be a hundred years old something's mm -hmm. gonna be needing repairs at some point and mm -hmm. you're gonna need to be able to afford to to fix them mm -hmm. um but yeah for, you know for sure and obviously you know we have a personal relationship so it's easier to sort of have that conversation but um you know you just you have to have some sort of reserves mm -hmm. you just do oh a hundred percent and i can't tell you how many clients i have to remind that after closing they will need food mm -hmm. like you will need to buy food after this closing that will be required. Yeah. You cannot use absolutely every time. Mm -hmm. And so many people are going, well, I'm going to get this gift and I'm going to, I have my parents to fall back on if I need yeah. this, this, and this. I said, but maybe, just mm -hmm. maybe you're shooting a little too high. And yeah. I'm not going to tell you what you need to buy, what you, what you should or shouldn't. But most of there was this one house that required a lot yeah. of repairs. And, you know, you were like, I'm up for it. I've got the people, but there was just some hesitation and we'll talk through that and i can't make a decision for somebody yeah. but like you know there's a whole slew of agents that will say just you know just have the home inspection and don't put in any um anything we'll we'll get a credit after the home inspection we'll, we always yeah. do it we always do it and it's like first of all that first offer you submit is you know any attorney will tell you you're signing a legally binding contract so you need to you need to know that and you can't guarantee all these things so if it doesn't feel right you need to take a step back and look at it and a, a home inspection is such a good tool to know where where your house stands currently and where it's going mm -hmm. yeah i did um yeah i did put in an offer on a house that did need a lot of work and i had spent like you know an hour and a half there with mark who is mm -hmm. a master plumber with mm -hmm. matt mahoney who also knows everybody i know everybody that like mm -hmm. could help me in those situations but um you know and and to be honest i was sort of burned after i didn't get it but now looking back i'm sort of grateful because all of the things that needed to be done with that house to make it the house that I wanted doesn't need to be done to the house that mm -hmm. I got. Mm -hmm. And yeah, my roof is a little older. So mm -hmm. like, you know, the next couple of years I'll replace my roof and, you know, I want to replace the windows and stuff. But, you know, what and I, I thought... think that it's great that you, those are the items that you are going to be replacing because that's like, that's you putting equity into your home, yeah. right? And like, I think of the items that people want to do, I think that those are the ones 
you might yeah. as well, right? Yeah, because you know, on the on the other hand, like I have beautiful hardwood floors. Mm. Like I I got a great price to to refinish the hardwood floors. I, you know, I, I there were things that I have already done to the house that made me feel like this is my house mm-hmm. and those like sort of bigger we call it, like bigger ticket items like i will do but i thought that i was gonna move in and be like oh i'm gonna get a bet uh, like you know a new living room set and all this and it's like no i like my tv's on the floor because i'm i'm that first time home buyer in my thoughts now like okay no like i do have to e- mm-hmm. eat you know like uh, these things can happen over time i don't need to you know i need to have the reserves because think, what happens yeah. if this goes and this goes and I need to be able to repair them. Yeah. Um, And the thing is too that I think it's so smart of you because I think that that's one of the things where people, especially first time home buyers, I'm not picking on them, but what I see and, you know, we have some other people here listening to in in Clubhouse as well. So feel free to chime in is they they get so excited and it's more about, hey, and I did it myself. I will tell you, I did it myself. And it was like, oh, I want this. I want this sofa. I want these pictures I want this I want that and then I get in the house and haven't I been saying that to you and Mel I have to tell you like from a motherly standpoint helping you out (laughs) in this situation and I know mom is probably listening but I know she loves me too and I love her but you know I would always say you know room wasn't built in a day yeah like just take it easy don't worry about it like get in and sort of feel the house and see if this is really how you want it laid out and set up and yeah get to know it I mean, now I'm at the point where I think you're taking a little too long. Like, empty out the boxes, will you? Oh, I'm trying, but I'm never home. <laughs> I'm at work. I'm paying for it. Um, yeah, no, it's 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 funny. Yeah, I mean, I closed November 20th, and I don't own silverware, so <laughs> I don't know how I'm getting by, but I am. Um, <laughs> um, I'll put but, it on my list. Okay? No, no, but but that's the thing. Like, you know, I I could. Yeah, you know, I'm very fortunate to be in a position where I could go to the store and buy. Yeah. Some silverware and buy whatever you know whatever mm-hmm. silverware I wanted but I am thinking in the back of my head like okay maybe I just get through you know yeah. the next couple of weeks like making sure that like well you have a birthday I, coming I up, need okay? to yeah I need that's to what I'm gonna buy you space. for your birthday let yeah. me buy you some silverware yeah okay for but perfect okay perfect but I'm very particular um, about it I so. will no. <laughs> okay, I'll let thanks. you I'll let you pick it out okay, How's great. That? okay? That sounds there, great. there you go Thank want me to just give you the money <laughs> You want to order it? <laughs> Working it over now. <laughs> so, all right. To our clubhouse uh, people that are up on stage, uh, thank you for joining us today, too. And um, I know that there are so many people in here that are just, you know, a wealth of knowledge. So uh, to everybody that is here, uh, does anybody have anything that they want to share with, like, your – what is your personal preference? Do you ask your clients to do a pre-home inspection? Do you choose not to? I'm just curious if anybody does want to chat in. Hey, Sharon. This is Maria from Mississippi. Hi. Um, this is such a good and needed conversation. Um, home inspections in our area, nobody does a pre-inspection, mm-hmm. which I love the idea of, but it's just not typical. Very few people do them in my area. Um, but what I tell my people, like my sellers, when I go in and we're doing the listing you know, presentation or, or you know, the listing appointment, I tell them, if you had a leak in the roof three years ago and you had it fixed and it has not leaked one, you know, one drop since, you still need to write that down because the home inspector is going to show that there was a past leak. And when they look and see that you didn't write that, but you knew it was done, it's going to make them doubt you in other areas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, And so I just think it's so important. And I just try to tell them it don't matter how small the issue was. Just write it down. Everything in the world that you know about the house, write it down because it's only going to help you and build the trust of the buyer. And so I I just think it's such a good and needed um, conversation this morning. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, you know, that's such a good and valid point, too, is that I know people will notice things, right? So I always say... You know, buyers are looking for what's wrong, not for what's right. So in your situation, if it comes up, I mean, sometimes it's just visual to the eye when you're working with a seasoned real estate agent, right? And then then I have to ask questions like, hey, can you tell me what this situation was about now? Uh, probably, I don't know, maybe like five, 10 years ago around here, we had a huge issue. It was probably 2015, actually. We had ice dams yeah, and a lot of damage happened. And now like when I go into homes, I'll say to the seller, oh, did you have ice dams back in 2015? They're like, yeah. And then, you know, after it all melted and everything, everything was fine. So 
I'd rather be able to explain than to sort of be on the defense about yeah. it. So, Marie, like you saw, you know, in the basement of the the building you bought, you already knew that yeah. there was yeah. And, and like a first time home buyer may not even pick that up. They may not even know. So, which is why the importance of having a buyer's agent, yeah. which is what we talked about on Tuesday night oh. on our show too. Yeah, Maria, why don't you give everybody your information if anybody is thinking about moving to the Mississippi area? I am happy to refer you over to Maria. So, Maria, give your information for everybody that's listening here in Massachusetts. Hey there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Maria Wilson. I serve the Northeast Mississippi and Southwest Tennessee area. I am the broker and owner of Wilco Real Estate Group. Um, we are a small town, but we're right in the middle of everything. Um, if you are in Memphis and need to go to Huntsville, or if you are in Nashville and need to go to Jackson, or I mean, we're just right in the crossroads. So, yes. Are um, you near I'm, Spencer? Yeah. Do what? Are you near Spencer? Is that like mm -hmm. a small town? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Is that in Mississippi? It is. Yeah. So, uh, I will I will connect with you off air. Oh, please too. do because yeah. I'm. Um, there's a lot of like communities here, and um, my husband and I we like to we we go all over the state of Mississippi, like Perfect. looking for little dives in little mm -hmm. areas. So yeah, if awesome. I if um if you need somebody there, I can I will probably know somebody. So perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, my pleasure. Thank you. Do we have somebody mm -hmm. else on Facebook that has a question? Oh no, just someone says morning from snowy cold Michigan. Oh, <laughs> that was me. Oh hi. <laughs> <laughs> we only have about two minutes left in the show, but yeah. um, what, anybody any else final thoughts? Yeah, sort of on this. Yeah. I feel like we have to do another one. Or yeah, we'll have them. to. Yeah, we can do another one on this. And Michelle just came in, and I know she's in Auburn right now. Uh, her daughter was looking at Auburn University, and Michelle is the queen of pre-home inspections michelle in like 30 seconds like because we are live do you want to talk to our or i don't even know if you can if you want to just flash your mic if you can talk or not okay yeah just yeah, tell her i can talk first of all tell everybody who you are where you're from the area that you serve so if anybody wants to go to your area i am happy to refer them to you um but then real quick like 30 seconds how, why you think the importance of a pre-home inspection Hello, everyone. This is Michelle Meinhart from Atlanta, Georgia, and I serve South Forsyth in North Fulton County. It's about 45 minutes north of the airport. And why pre-enlisting inspections are so important, it literally gives you the playbook uh, before you walk into the game. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, what do they want? They want reassurance that they're not going to be penny nickeled and dimed after they go under contract and they're going through due diligence. So what a Mr. and Mrs. Buyer want. They want to know the health of the home. They want to know what they're buying. So when we put everything out on the table before we go into the game, everyone has a clear understanding and there are no surprises and no one is left holding the bag. Oh, that is why. That. that was perfect. That was like we practiced that because you can hear my music. So to all of our uh, people that joined me in Clubhouse, thank you for doing that. We're here every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. If you want to join me, pipe in. I am happy to refer my people here in Massachusetts to wherever you are in the United States because I only refer the best of the best to everybody around here. Um, Mel, what a great show we had today. Yeah, this was great. Great topic. Yeah. If you want to reach out to us, bostonconnect.com. You can also uh, find all our past shows on talkrealestateroundtable.com or on a podcast mm -hmm. app. Um, yeah, and, and we'll be back on Tuesday with Kristen Howlett, full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate, to do our monthly uh, South Shore highlight of Pembroke. Yeah, that will be great. So have a great day, everybody. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, everybody. Oh, you're welcome, Mine. I have always wanted to have a neighbor just, just like you. you. I've always wanted to live Thank in you, a Clubhouse people. I appreciate you. Thank you, Chandler. All right. <laughs>